Hi, I'm Kayla Hansen and I'm an engineer with NPCA. I'm here today with Dean at Lindsay Precast Plant in Canal Fulton, Ohio. And today, Dean is going to show us how his plant inspects reinforcement and what we can do to catch potential issues. Thanks for taking the time, Dean. No problem. All right, so first of all, I noticed that you have a complete set of drawings out here in the fabrication and production area, but you also have a second set of drawings in the office. Why is it necessary to have two complete sets of drawings in these two separate locations? So our production team out here in the shop needs one set of drawings to build off of for QC and production. The other set of drawings for our office um, is for our project managers and our dispatch um, to really document and coordinate the drawings in the office. All right, so just to clarify, your fabrication crew out here uses these drawings to make sure that the reinforcing assemblies are made with the right materials, the right size materials, and that the spacing and measurements, hooks and bends, everything is done correctly and overall everything is assembled properly, right? Yes, yeah, so we actually do with this with a pre-pour um, QC inspection sheet uh, per MPCA QC mm -hmm. manual. Um, we have the date on the top right to keep it organized. We have the job number and job name and product name. Um, we'll go through this entire checklist um, and have the design steel versus actual steel. So the reason that we need to record the actual measurements that we observe, even though we have the design requirements listed on our inspection sheets, is because for these reinforcing assemblies to work properly and for the products themselves to work properly, everything needs to be done exactly according to these design drawings and the engineer's plans. So if anything is slightly off, it can cause significant problems. So recording our actual measurements allows us to compare what the design requires and what we measure, and we can look at the tolerance and make sure that that's within the allowable tolerance. And at this point, if anything is incorrect and it's out of tolerance, we can fix it now rather than trying to address it later on. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the reinforcing assembly we're gonna be looking at today. So actually behind us, we have a 32 foot span arch mold uh, that has welded wire reinforcing in it. Why don't we go down this checklist and we can start checking off some of the reinforcing details. All right. So first on our checklist is the size of the reinforcing. Yes, so Junior, why don't we uh, pull out, this is Junior and QC, we'll pull out a gauge, a wire gauge, to check the area of our steel. We're gonna actually uh, write down our actual steel. It's okay. D6 by W6.5. Our design is D6 by W6.5, so we're okay. We are exactly what is designed. All right, so next on our checklist is reinforcing spacing. Yes, yeah, so Junior, let's pull a tape measure for some reinforcing. Looks like two inches there. by six inches horizontally. That is our actual, and our design is two by six, so we are, we are okay. So we are per design. And for this particular assembly, I see that the tolerance is a quarter of an inch? Yes, yeah, so now for this customer, for this design, it's a quarter inch for this product line. Okay. Now product lines may vary um, depending on the end user, the customer, the situation you run into. So it could be a sixteenth of an inch all the way up to an inch. So definitely have to uh, keep that in mind. All right, so next on our list is reinforcing area. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a D6 by W6.5, as mm -hmm. we mentioned. Um, the D6 is 0 .06 inches squared. So on your horizontal bar, in that foot length, because area steel is measured in a foot length, mm -hmm. you have six of those bars. So 0 .06 times six bars, your area steel for your horizontal bars would be 0.36. Okay. Uh, same with your vertical bars, except you only have two vertical bars in a foot spacing. Mm -hmm. So you have 0 0.065 times two of those bars in that foot will give you 0.13 inches squared for your vertical bars. Okay, and that's exactly what our design calls for, so we're good to go? Exactly. Okay, so next on our checklist is verifying the 
amount of reinforcing or the number of welded wire reinforcing sheets in the assembly? Yes, so as you can tell right now, um, we have the single layer on. Mm -hmm. There is actually seven pieces for this whole product. Okay. Um, so right now we see three behind us and we have four on the floor. So we have seven total and so we're okay. Sometimes, most of the time, our QC will check that steel right when it comes off the truck so we don't have all the steel on the product and then have to take it all back down and bolt production. So usually we count our number of mesh right when it comes off that truck before we get the mold set up. So next on our checklist is concrete cover and effective depth. Yes, so Junior here, um, we're gonna pull the length of our chairs, so it's our plastic bolsters. Um, they should be two inches. And they are. So we have a two inch plastic chair. So your cover of your reinforcing is the edge of your product to your compressive side to the edge of your reinforcing, that's your cover. So that chair is two inches, so the edge of that reinforcing, the edge of your product would be two inches, okay. so we're okay there. And then your effective depth is actually the edge of the product to the middle of the reinforcing. All so right. that compressive face to the middle, from here it's 2.1, it should be 2.1 inches. Okay. So let's, let's pull the tape measure and see what we have. There it is, 2.1 inches. So next on our inspection checklist is lap splice length. And lap splice length is the length of the reinforcement overlap. And this isn't gonna to apply to every reinforcing assembly. For example, rebar mats may not have a splice, but in this case, we're inspecting welded wire reinforcement. So we do have some lap splice lengths that we need to verify. So Junior, let's, uh, we have two lap splice lengths in this product. Uh, we have a foot minimum lap splice on the left and on the right. So let's pull a tape and Make sure we have the 12 inch minimum. Yeah, so it looks like we have about an 18 inch lap, which is more than enough. Obviously your lap is a minimum of a foot. So we can record that the lap splice was within tolerance, a minimum of 12 inches. It was an 18 inch lap splice, so we're okay. Um, obviously like all of these lap splices and coverage, just for this video, we're only doing one mesh sheet, but we would gauge every mesh sheet we would measure every mesh sheet, we would measure every lap splice. But for, the, for this video, for the coverage and the effective depth, we're just gonna go to one mesh. We're gonna All measure right. once. Okay, so next on our list then is verifying the length and the width of the reinforcing. Yes, so in this cage, it should be 65 and a half inches tall mm -hmm. and 195 inches long. So we'll measure one of these. Obviously, we would measure all of them, but for the sake of video, let's just measure one here. go, 65 and a half. So we are 65 and a half inches tall, which is exactly what is designed. Okay. Um, and we will, we would pull the 195 inches to make sure the length was correct as well. All right. So next on our inspection checklist, we have a visual inspection of the welded wire reinforcing condition. And we need to make sure that it's clean, there's no form oil on it, there's no excessive rust, light rust is acceptable, mm -hmm. and we also need to verify that the reinforcement isn't dirty, there's no pitting or gouging in the welds or undercutting. So on this weld wire, we're very fortunate this came straight from the supplier. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a supplier, you're doing your own in-house steel, um, definitely want to check the reinforcing before putting in the product. Mm -hmm. um, you can take your gloves off for this and make sure there's no form oil on the steel so you have good adhesion to the reinforcing. Um, something to look for is the pitting or is a flaking over excessive amount of rust. Um, again, we're very fortunate with this steel. It's very, very clean. All right. So how do we actually determine if these welds are acceptable or not? So again, either whether it's from a supplier or you're welding your own rebar in-house, um, you have to make sure that it is comparable to a single unit. So that the metal is fused properly, there's no breaking or cracks in the welds. Um, make sure there's no undercutting, make sure there's, that piece should be solid as one solid piece of steel. All right. So next we're going to verify hooks and bends. So on this, we have two bends on both sides, um, 90 degree bends. The biggest thing you want to look for is kinks in that bend mm -hmm. and make sure there's no thinning of that steel around that bend. So it's, more, it's a visual look. We would definitely look at every single one of these bends for this purpose. We're just going to look at one bend of this mesh. 
So at this point, if you would encounter a problem, how would you address it? So we would flag it, uh, we would red flag it, um, we would get our reinforcing team um, up here immediately, we would halt production, um, definitely not let it pour, and we would correct the issue um, before anything else happens. We would get a double check to make sure that action is performed to make sure it is correct, um, and then we would continue production. All right, so then once everything is fixed and the reinforcing steel assembly passes its inspection, what happens next? So obviously we have to put the other cage on here, but we would tighten up the jackets, latch the jackets, and we would pour the mold. So when it comes to reinforcing steel inspection, what one piece of advice can you offer? Um, I'd probably say from production to the office, it's very easy to miss the vertical reinforcing bars um, being switched from exterior to interior, or the horizontal being bars being on the outside or inside um, definitely me makes a big structural difference. On the plan, sometimes the plans are printed small and you maybe not, might not be able to tell that well, but definitely uh, a little tidbit, I guess, um, to look out for in the production facility. All right, well that's great advice. Thanks so much for taking the time today, Dean. No problem. So in summary, three important points to remember are record your design versus actual. It's important to compare what the design, the engineering design requirements are and record every measurement that we observe so we can compare and make sure that everything is within tolerance. The second important point is to make sure that we have a system in place so that if something isn't within tolerance, that we have a way that we can tag the assembly or mark the assembly somehow that everyone is aware that there's an issue here and we can resolve it prior to the form being poured. The third important point to remember is to verify that our welds are all acceptable and there's no undercutting and also make sure that our reinforcing steel is in good condition. So we don't want any form release on it, we don't want any dirt or excessive rust. So that's all for today, thanks for watching.